So I, I grew up in Pennsylvania, um, and so I had a lot of good morning shows that I was really fascinated with. Uh, Elvis Duran was local there at the time, if I have my timeline correct. Uh, Chio in the Morning was also doing his thing there. And both shows, I was just so like, you know, the War of the Roses, all those. I was I was really fascinated with that and always wondering how all that worked. Um, but never actually at that point like was like, oh, I want to go in radio. Um, I, I think it was probably ninth grade um, in in Pennsylvania. I had a uh, a teacher that we were doing like it was kind of like a Photoshop class, but it was like it was a, the best way to describe it because I don't remember the class name, but it was like content creation class before it was content creation class. Oh, like, okay. I don't even think like YouTube was starting to become a thing. Um, and we were, because that's why I was interested in it. I was like, oh, I want to do YouTube videos. I want to, I want to make videos because, uh, where I grew up was pretty close to where like Bam Margera and those guys were at the time. So like, uh, uh, CYK, they were putting out their stuff on YouTube and I'm like, I can jump off a tree and hurt myself. Let's, let's film it. <laughs> um, yes. and so my friend got a, got a camera and that's kind of what started things in that. And so from the school aspect, they had us do things like Photoshop, but I don't even think it was called Photoshop at that point. And that's when I kind of got like the bug to create. Um, that was kind of what got me in like, okay, this might be a path I want to go down. Um, and then like 10th grade, 11th grade, I took more classes that were like music oriented i grew up playing the drums uh from like fourth grade i was in the marching band all that stuff from understanding music from the percussion side of things and wanting to create things i took these classes that would be like i think i think the software they used was cubase if i remember the name but it was it was essentially like he would the teacher would give us a Michael Jackson song and say, remix this, like just change it. And so we would have our little MIDI boards and all this stuff and we would do that. And that's when I really like started getting into the audio editing stuff. Um, so I, I enjoyed the hell out of it, but even this, like we're in, we're in senior year of, co- of, of high school and I'm not even radar uh, radio is not really on my radar. Um, and so then I had to go to college <laughs> cause that's, that's the way everybody goes. Um, so I, I ended up, uh, not wanting to stay in Philadelphia because I really don't, don't like the cold. Um, and that's where I stumbled upon the college that I, I went to Flagler college in St. Augustine, Florida. It's phenomenal. If anybody is like looking for a place to vacation, like definitely go there. Like it's like historic and there's a downtown with a bunch of bars and then there's a beach. Like what more, (laughs) what more do you need? And for a college kid, I was like, this is amazing. Um, and it was kind of the, the icing on top that when I was, when I was touring the school, I had met the, uh, Dan McCook, who was the guy in charge of the radio station. And I kind of told them I was interested in in audio stuff and and video stuff, and they had a communications path, which was media production. Um, and he was like, "This would be a great way for you. We can hook you up with like a, a college show your freshman year. Like, you want to come in? We'll we'll just we'll just get you going." And so uh, I, that kind of was was it. I, I decided to do that. I came down. Uh, and and I had a two hour morning show for four years in. in in college and it was very old school radio. Like we went out, we picked our CDs for the show that we were going to play. And we had two CD players. And if you didn't have the other one loaded up, you were on air stalling for time. Um, But I remember even then, like, cause I hadn't, you know, interned with a radio station or anything. And I remember back then we had a computer that would do the overnights for us. Cause the whole station was volunteers or college kids. And so we had a computer that would um, do overnights. And I was like, I remember thinking like, well, why can't I record our callers on the computer and edit it to be faster, to be like a a really good crisp break and play it back? And uh, Dan and I went back and forth. Dan and I, it was a, it was a, it was a love, love relationship, but it, it, you know, he was a, he was an old guy. And so he would, he would. We would get into it. We would argue, uh, which which I always feel like a lot of good conversations come out of arguing as long as you can keep the tempers down. 
Um, and so I, I felt like I learned a lot from him, um, but with the with the software we were using and all that stuff, like I, I knew I had already kind of gotten to like, all right, there's got to be something more than this. Like, like I'm ready to take that next step. And that's when um, I reached out to, it was at iHeart Station uh, up here in Jacksonville, um, and, and I interned for their cluster um, for a summer, but but I, I left to go to London and Paris for like a study abroad month that they had us do. So we toured like BBC. We did all their media. It was it was through the Flagler Media umbrella. So when we were in when we were in London, we went to see the BBC radio and TV station. Like it was so cool. I say, I bet that was amazing. And and seeing the stuff that they were doing there, I was like, oh. Oh, this, I haven't even scratched the surface yet. Um, so that, and like, it took me back. Like I saw, oh, I forget which host it was, or, or it was so long ago, but I saw them do a bit with a caller where it was essentially just like shouting out your friends. And and it, it brought me back to like being in Philly, waking up, it, hearing the radio station. I, I think it was like 96.5 wire or something like that in philly they had a weekend host that did like call your friends out and tell them whatever you want and i remember being a little kid like you know on the phone waiting for my moment and then they're like they're like hey it's your time and i'm like what 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 do i say i don't you know i probably <laughs> butchered the whole yeah, i butchered the whole segment for him uh it took me back to that and being like okay like i do think i'm interested in this um and then with the internship it was pretty cool i left that i went back to doing my radio shift at Flagler my senior year, um, and I, I felt like I needed one more uh, internship, and that's when I interned at the station I'm still on now with uh, WAPE. Um, I interned with the night show guy, uh, Sparks, uh, Matt, super nice guy. Oh, I know. And him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in I Colorado, love Sparks. Right? Yeah. Yes, he moved out to Colorado. Um, yep, so so Matt, uh, he kind of brought me in. He, he's, he scared the hell out of me. I remember... I remember, you know, you're a college kid, so like, you know, the the funniest thing was none of my friends could comprehend that I would elect to go to bed early, one night a week, one night a week, so that I could get up at five in the morning to go talk on the radio for two hours. They're like, why would you do that? It's flip night, like right. quarter beer night, dude. Like, I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I it's just one night out of the whole week that I'm not going to go out. I applied for a station across the street. And I also applied to a station in St. Augustine um, that was uh, 105.5. I think it was also Wire at the time. It's now Beach or something like that. Um, And they had the Elvis Duran morning show syndicated. Um, So I, out of college, right out of college, took that job. I I worked in St. Augustine for about probably five months where I was I was essentially programming the morning show and then inserting the uh, midday and afternoon jock breaks who were sending us the audio. That was kind of my job. And then, like, uh, we would do events from time to time, and I'd have to take, like, we had this big truck that would, like, high-rise out, and we, we would do that. Uh, I should not have been driving that truck. but <laughs> We um, all shouldn't have been driving those cars. <laughs> you're right, right. They were a little sketchy, but but that was fun. Um I think this was like that was like a a good start to understanding at least how like the radio station clocks and all that work. Um, but I do remember that one not ending great because I was programming the Elvis Duran morning show, and I'm sitting. You know, you're sitting in there listening. They go on a, a six minute commercial break. You gotta you gotta make sure your commercials everything line up or whatever it is, and. They come back and Elvis is talking about how they are losing a station in North Florida. And I'm like, oh, this is awesome. Like the the competing station that runs Elvis, they're go- that's going to go away. This is really going to make my job like more valuable. This is going to be great. And then they say they're losing my station. And I'm like, huh. <laughs> Wait, that's how you found out? Was that's that- how I found out. And I remember because they, they had a way you could communicate with like the production to like if there was problems. I remember being like, um, what? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we're so sorry. That's a new one I haven't heard yet. It is it is what it is, but I, I remember there was some conversation of like, they weren't supposed to say that. I'm like, I mean, look, if the writing was on the wall, the writing was on the wall, you know? Like, what are you going to do? 
Um, so then when that was over, I hit up Matt again, Sparks, and, and asked him if they had any availability. And their only thing was like some weekend work, you know, babysitting our news talk station board and the other boards and just making sure commercials were running. And so I took that and uh, got a job at a car dealership, uh, merchandising their cars, taking photos, updating their website and stuff like that. Um, and I did that for a th- two and a half years. Oh, at driving from St. Augustine to Jacksonville, which is which was put a toll on my car. Uh, it was, it, you know, it's like it's like it's like sixty, seventy miles a day. It, it really uh, Ooh, for yeah. for part time work, it was it was rough, and and it was the hours were six a.m. to three p.m. Saturday, Sunday. That's the only times I worked, and so that was like if you're not actually dedicated to <laughs> radio and wanting to do this, like you're probably going to give up pretty quick. But I stuck with it, and then. Um, Probably a, a year and a half into the part, uh, probably a year into the part time work. Uh, it might have been when Matt left. And when he left, they asked me to fill in at nights just to like make sure things were good and, and, and bridge the gap. But I ended up doing that for a while. And then in that, they realized I was decent at imaging. So they had me start imaging the radio station. So I was imaging the radio station nights and weekends, but a part time. <laughs> oh and my I, gosh! You know, so you get a little frustrated. Um, but I did that for a while, and then after uh, after all that, I started. I was fill ins for the morning show producer whenever um, whenever they were out. So I started. I was doing that a lot. Um, Mark K and Megan, they're they're awesome, um, and and so. When it came time for that producer ended up leaving, and so when they needed a new one, they were kind of like, hey, like, Justin already knows what he's doing, just, like, let's just go. Um, so I got in our morning show, and then the company kind of realized I was I was good at digital. I was good at doing some blogs and video and Photoshop. Uh, so they moved me to nights again, but also digital, so website development, all that stuff. And then... <laughs> um, after doing that for close to probably a year and a half, two years, uh, our company here in Jacksonville started up a sports station. And they knew I had producer experience and I could handle all this stuff. On the back end, they also knew I was a super nerd and into video games and streaming. So when the station launched, I was a big proponent on we need to have a video element on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, on TikTok. Well, TikTok wasn't a thing, but on TikTok, you know, like I was, I was like, we need a video everywhere. And I, I, I thoroughly remember a lot of people in the company being like, all right, let's just get the station started. Then we'll worry, worry about the video. And I was like, no, let's, let's just get through all the bumps at the same time. And, and the station, um, the, where it's at now with, with the video and the streams that they do daily, like it's, it's so cool to see something that was like, an idea in my head back in the day that I was like, there's a way this can work if we can just get the right equipment set in in the right area. And luckily we have a TV station attached to our building that is owned by the same company. So we were able to like talk to them about things and learn. And, and it's, it's really cool to see that come through. What was the part like that made you go, okay, radio specifically is the route I want to go. So I really, really, really loved imaging. When I was when I was making the imaging, writing the pieces, the sweepers, the promos, the contests, whatever it was, we used to do. Um, if I remember correctly, back then one of the big segments or or contests we did on our station was like beat the banker type thing, where you know you play the audio, you have that whole thing going, and and so I would create those pieces, and I had so, like creating it, and then seeing other people execute it, and those other people were you know in the industry for so long so they were knocking it out of the park it was like this is really cool and i can get to that point on top of that two of my friends that i have now uh i met them one was working for our news talks actually both of them were working for our news talk station and i was working for uh for ape on the weekends and so a lot of that was babysitting the computers and they would just come in and we were were all big nba fans and this was right when podcasts were were really getting talked about, at least in the industry. People were like, we need to be making podcasts. Like, why are we not making a podcast? Um, and so we were like, why don't we show the company we know how to do this and just create a basketball podcast? 
And so we did. And I actually, w- one of our buddies doesn't do it with us anymore. Um, he, he got out of the industry, but, but me and uh, Kevin, we still do this basketball podcast. We are on season nine of doing this basketball podcast that just kind of started as a passion play. And even then, I was trying to radioize the podcast, which um, some people had to talk me back out of, but I was trying to, like, segment it. Like, oh, we're going to do this segment to start, you know, and then we're going to do this segment as the next thing. And then we're going to do we're gonna do Ballin' and Fallin', our, our the Baller of the Week and our Follow. You know, like, very radio-y things where it was like, hey, you need to... <laughs> let's not do that, you know. Like let's let's take the filters Good practice, off, though, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like let's take let's take the filters off all the voices. It's a podcast. We're just talking here. Um, so so scratching the like wanting to host, the wanting to talk into a microphone itch with the Drive and Dish NBA podcast, and then having the imaging go. I was like, all right, I've realized myself personally. I like to make content and i don't care if it's an imaging piece of content video content a podcast content a on-air break content i want it to be entertaining content and so that's kind of why it's just i've been here and doing it and and uh you know uh, my bosses have been nice enough to let me continue to make content so that's that's what we're continuing to do the kids, the younger generation that's now going to potentially come this way with their content creating skills that they don't realize they're honing because they just want to make TikTok videos about uh, uh, Disney dads. That I think that one's trending right now. <laughs> like, like random Disney dads that are like they're going to have such an upper hand from a video editing and understanding how to make it engaging standpoint where they could maybe – they could look at a radio break that has a video version and go, oh, well, you need to do a jump cut here and make it quick zoom back and then maybe use a weird uh, voice filter to make you sound like an old lady on here. You know, like I understand some people will think that's kind of gimmicky, but that's the game on at least TikTok. The counter to it, and this is what I talk about with my coworker all the time because we we argue about this stuff, the the purpose of social media, what's it actually doing? Is it is is it actually going to help your ratings? I, I don't know, <laughs> you know? The ratings that are inaccurate anyway because of the system we use. You right, know? <laughs> right. So it's like, you know, and, and, and you look at, like, I'll look at my analytics. My, the Most of my followers are from Chicago. So, like, from a radio standpoint, why does Chicago matter for Jacksonville? You know, like, there's a lot of that that goes on. And tomorrow I could be on the whole other side of this argument and today here's where I am at it, it just it bounces around all the time and I get in my head about it it's it's a it's a continuous debate and I love talking to other radio people about it to get their opinions right like e white specifically is is someone who I've talked to recently about it because he is super hyper local and and I've tried that for me but again because I've gained a decent following in Chicago, I don't think they want me to go into a coffee shop in Jacksonville and rate the coffee. You know, like that's that's kind of the bet I've created now. Like I can't do that. Um, so you know, I also think if you're going, if you haven't started a social media account on any of it, it's not too late. But make sure you know your direction and your purpose and your niche as you start sometimes it kind of develops you know you start doing something within your audience like you said you're kind of figuring out like what's what they're responding to and then all of a sudden it's like oh they actually really like this content a lot you know maybe i lean it this way for the longest time what i was doing is i was going live in one of our production studios hooking hooking my phone up to the production studio going live on tiktok with like free bed music and and giving them the production studio phone number and i was just taking calls Random TikTok calls. Now, I had it uh, filtered in a way where I could almost be scream- uh, screening the calls while live because you know how the internet sucks and people say horrible things. Uh, but that turned into a great content driver for the longest time where I'd have, I'd have banked two full hours of callers for like the next week of shows if I, if I needed them, right? Like I had, I had all these calls and then... I don't know if it was TikTok or or what, but my account got suspended for doing it. Really? So Wait, the TikTok account? My account, yeah, it okay. got suspended. I got it back, but it was like they I, 
I it was weird. Like I've seen other people doing it since. Yeah. But what was there was there a reasoning? I mean, there were like you know, you have the you have the the moderating uh comment filters on to try to like stop the almost like bullying or or whatever can go on in the comments and the day that it got banned there was a little the comments were meaner than normal so i wonder if that was part of it but i took it as like i was asking people to get off of their app to call into my live um so I I assumed it was they didn't like that. Interesting. Okay. But I haven't I haven't tried it again because I'm like I I don't know how many strikes do you get with your account getting suspended before it's like nah. And then and like because honest like as much as I love social media, if it got deleted, like I don't want to try to build another. Oh, fuck, <laughs> build another right? like, yeah, so, Especially no, when you, you work that hard. Oh right. My gosh. That'd, be the, that'd be the most. That would be the day I'd be like, mm, we're done. We're not. Yeah. No. Nope, no more <laughs> social media for me. If you're going to post on TikTok, make sure it's right, because especially with that now, because the kids are so young, like if you do it wrong, it can be a little cringeworthy and it might have the opposite effect. It may not, but like, you know, it's it, it, it can not work. And that at that point, it's like, why waste your time? You know, that's that's my other thing with it. I see I see some people post on social media in the radio industry. I'm not calling I'm not going to call anybody out, but I see them post. I see them post. And it doesn't it doesn't change. So like they post the first time, the next time's the same thing. It may be different topic, but same structure. And it's like, okay, well, what have you learned from your first ten posts? What did good, and why? How can you mimic that? My biggest pet fee, my biggest pet peeve now from it's probably from TikTok. And I know it's not only radio people that do this, but when they start a video being like, hey, I'm so-and-so from radio station, I promise you nobody on TikTok cares. Like, it sounds bad. It's an ego thing, I think, but it's like nobody cares. And you've wasted two seconds of that video where all the experts are saying you've got three seconds to hook them. Two seconds was you telling me who you are and where where you're from. Which I can find out if I really care by clicking on your bio. Yes. Get to the, get to the meat of why you're entertaining. Which again, I think if you're doing that stuff on TikTok, it could also if you're doing an afternoon show, music centric morning show where you're talking for fifteen seconds in between a song, that's a section essentially a TikTok video. What's your hook? How are you keeping them in? And what are you gonna you know what are you what's the content? Uh, if you have 15, if you have 15 seconds talking out of the song and it starts or even ends with you saying the station, the slogan, your name, well, that's five seconds of it. And and if the content wasn't that great, I'm not saying people are going to change the station, but it makes it a less potential of a good break. Listening to all your other interviews, listening. To, and, and by the way, I'm, I'm like you. You said this like I'm such a fan of radio people that sometimes I let it like blur my my vision or 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 distort it a little bit like like I get like the fact that we're doing this right now like the imposter syndrome's going crazy you know like you're like oh, I'm really? like why would I be here like I just you know like what what uh, so but like you know I think because I I am such a fan of radio people and the content that they're putting out one, it makes me super jealous. Uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Like I see someone put out a good video. Um, I see I see E White who who uh, oh yeah. You know, I watch his stuff all the time. I see E White put out a video and it gets it gets a hundred k and I'm like, damn, good for him. <laughs> but I totally could have done that. You know, like why didn't I think of that? You know, I get jealous. But then it's like it's it's cool to see other people out here finding their niche, getting their things going, and and then. In a way, relating it back to uh, their radio station to potentially bring those those listeners in. I feel like if if a radio station was treated like a localized content house like that, and your primary focus was local, 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 your personalities, and then also the station and the events you're putting on. Then when you do have to get advertisement-y, like the events that you have to push and stuff, 
it kind of fits the format a little bit and everything flows and it's not going to feel out of place. It seems like such a simple formula. Ego gets in the way and and that doesn't look like, I don't know, to me, I'd rather it look like that than a bunch of Getty images of Billie Eilish and Ariana Grande yes. with the headline that are, that that was posted. I get it. We have to talk about those things. But at that point... If if breaking Ariana Grande news happens, if you're a top 40 station, of course you're going to be talking about it. Get two of your DJs. If they're not in the building together, get them on a call like this. Film yourself talking about it and post that. I would rather see that. Maybe maybe have a have a graphic that pops up and, and at least sets the tone with what you're talking about. But that is kind of where I think it makes a little more sense than than just posting, you know, Ariana Grande gonna gonna star on Wicked. Uh, moving to Europe, I, I you know, if I could, and this is just me thinking out loud now, um, if if I could, if I could start a station from scratch, and just because I'm on a pop station, say it's a pop station, it would definitely be very much obvious. Every sta- every sh- uh, radio station, obviously, morning show matters. So what I would do is say it's f- five people. They're all on the morning show. Everybody's a personality on the morning show. And and we figure out two of you that want to do an afternoon show and uh, another two that want to do some night breaks and, and this and that. And that way, the whole station is those five people. Thank and you. And they know yes. those five people. Mm-hmm. And their social media is always those five people. They're doing everything together. And it could be random combos of people, but it is all of them. And I think that that would be the way to do it because then, you know, you can still appointment set. And I know that like all those all the words that all the higher ups love to hear, you can do that stuff. But but then it it creates that chemistry between five people that everybody knows. And, you know, if the two nerds from that show or on video together, you're getting some nerdy radio content or you or that guy that always likes to have that debate of whether a hot dog is a sandwich you know he's going to be asking some stupid question to somebody else on that video and that is the video content you're going to get um and the movie guy is going to be bringing up what's the what's the one that my buddies were just talking about the the cocaine bear the uh the 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 movie that's coming out you know like those are the you you can do the news topics but do it with your personalities it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be I guess the word is it, it can be the same, but if it's the same with your personality, it's different. And that is what people will find value in. I feel like we're told to make so much content these days. If you can streamline it in a way, not that it's basic level content, but if you have a formula that like if you have a good clip, you have a formula that you can already throw it through or do. And, you know, in 10 minutes, you're going to have this banger social video that plugs the sports station your your afternoon show your whatever like that's really the way i feel like uh social media can make a lot of sense for radio stations these days